Hello! What we're going to do in this video is going to go through really quickly how to get you started to making histograms using Google Sheets and we're going to use this Project 7B to get started. So in this Project 7B we're, we want to make histograms to compare the carb content for both children and adult cereals. So I'm going to go ahead and switch over to a Google Sheet that has all of the data that we did with our original posters. Now hopefully your professor will, will give you guys this uh, data already prepared or, or will talk to you about how to input this data in or import it in. Okay, so what we're going to do first is since we need to compare based upon two variables, right? We want to use the adult and children designation and for the variable for the actual carbs. So we want all the adult cereals next to each other and all the children's cereals next to each other so that they'll be a lot easier to count. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort the, the, the data in the spreadsheet first. Okay, so we are going to highlight everything and I like to, to click on the top bar up there and then just drag to the right. And what we're going to do is go to the data option right here and hit sort range. Now. You're going to click that the data has a header row because you don't want to sort those, but we're going to sort by the target, which is where the adult children are, or where we know whether it's an adult cereal or a child cereal. So I'm going to go ahead and sort right there. Okay, now I go back and I look over here and now I see all adult cereals and all children's cereals and they're all right next to each other. And that will make our next step much, 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 much easier. Okay, now I want to put the two pictures and all the information I'm doing here not on this page here because it's already a lot of information, but on its own little sheet. So I'm going to click down at the bottom here for add sheet. Okay, and then I want to name the sheet. So I'm going to double click that and I'm going to say carb comparison. Now you should probably write out those whole, all those words and everything like that. I'm just doing it really quickly. I'm going to go over here and what we want to do is we're going to create two frequency distributions before we create the histograms. So I want to create one for the adult cereals and I'm going to label it and I give myself about a couple spaces over and then I want to do one for the children's cereal. Okay now here we're going to put some frequency distributions and if you remember the frequency distributions you need to have the carbs which is the variable that we're creating the distribution for and then the counts, which we call frequencies. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing for the child. So maybe carb or carbs it doesn't. Well, I spell I spell wrong anyway. So we got frequency. Okay. Now here, normally what we would do if I wanted to create something that was say had a bin width of five carbohydrates, say starting at zero, we would put in whole intervals like zero to five, five to ten. Uh, 10 to 15 and so on and so forth. Well, see, it starts getting confused. The trouble is, is that to do this counting, the program needs it in a slightly different form. So instead of having zero to five, we're just gonna put one number and that one number is the largest decimal um, that we want to include into this class before we round it up to be in the next class, which you remember would start at five. So I'm going to put that decimal as 4.4. Now some teachers will put it as 4.45. It kind of depends on how you want to align the data. Okay, or actually no, or they, some people would put it as 4.5. But for our purposes, we want to put 4.4 because we don't want to ever have a situation where we accidentally put something in there that is too big. Okay, so now I'm going to put the next class width or class uh, boundary, or I'm sorry, bin boundary for this book. So we have the 9.4, and then we're gonna put 14.4. Notice these are all a width of five apart. Then we do 19.4, then uh, 24.4, and then I'm gonna stop there because if I look back at my data, there's not gonna be any um, uh, cereals that have more than 25 carbohydrates. So that's exactly why we're gonna stop there. Now I'm gonna duplicate that exact thing over here. So do 4.4, since I want to have the exact same classes, 9.4, uh, we're going to go 14.4, 19.4, and then 24.4, 24 
and then we're going to go here and what we want to do is we want to put all the counts but we're not going to count this by hand we're going to make the computer do it and the way that we do that is we use the frequency function so what do we do to tell it that we're going to enter in a command or a function is we start off by typing equals and then i start typing in fre and notice it notice there that the only thing that starts with fr is going to be frequency so we can go ahead and click that and I want you to read these because this basically tells you exactly what we need to enter next. So if we ever, ever, ever forget, definitely won't have this all memorized, this is going to be a good little guide. So the first thing we need is the actual data. Now this is the list of the actual serial carbohydrate contents. And then the next is going to be how we want to divide it up. So this data is back in our serial data. And since this is for our adults, I'm going to go to the carb column and then highlight all the adult cereals. So I'm just going to keep going down, 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 until I get to the last adult cereal. Then I'm going to hit comma to tell it say that I'm done. Now it's highlighting the classes, and that's what we created in the first column right here. So it basically tells it how it wants to divide everything up. Okay. Then I'm going to enter, and ta-da! It did all the counting. Now I know I got all the class boundaries that I needed, or the, all the bins that I needed, uh, because there is nothing in this last area right here. What this last bar will be is basically counting everything in the data set that is bigger than the last class boundary that you have. So that tells you whether you need more class boundaries or not. Okay, since that's zero, we don't need any more. Now I'm gonna do the same thing for the children's. So I'm gonna hit frequency, hit enter, then I'm gonna go back to the data and now I want to put in the children's cereals, the carbohydrates for the children's cereals. So I'm going to go down, I was in, F was the carbs, I'm going to go to the children's cereal right on F, first child cereal, then just highlight down, highlight down, highlight down until it's done, then hit comma, then go back to my sheet where all my distributions are and then highlight those right there where all my bin definition, where all the bin boundaries are. Then I hit equals, and ta-da, it's all counted. Now you want to remember what this means is that from about 5 to 10, there are four cereals that had 5 to 10 uh, grams of carbohydrates. From 10 to 15, that's about 16. From uh, 15 to 20, there's about 20. Okay. Now, distributions, these frequency tables are awesome. They're great. You can use them to compare if you want but pictures rule the day. So what we want to do is we want to make an actual histogram so we can see the shape. Okay. So the way we do that is we highlight our frequency distribution with those labels on the top, and then we go over here to insert chart. The histogram is just a chart. Now here, I want you to notice that as it starts off, it thinks you're dealing with two different groups. Uh, since it has two columns, it's dealing with two different variables that might not even be related to each other. It's not really what we have. We have one column that is counting something about the other. So we're going to go over to chart type. We want to tell it that these two are related. And the way we do it is by clicking this, use column A as the labels. So basically, it tells us that the frequencies are tied to the bin uh, boundaries that we had listed um, in the one column. Okay. So right here has one value. Then there's a few customizations I like to do. The first one is I want to remind myself that this is our adult serials. Okay. And then I want to label the horizontal axes. That's probably the most important one. So you want to go carbs per um, serving. And then make this say what unit it's in, grams. And then if you want to play around with how this is labeled on the bottom, you can change where it begins, where it ends, and then how many grid lines are created for the range that's defined. So this divides it up into five. So there's a one, two, three, four, five different grid lines um, when it's starting from zero and going to um, 20, a little bit over 25. Okay. So I don't want to change all that. I'll let you guys uh, play with that on your own. So we're going to go insert. And there's our picture. See these adult cereals right, all ready to go. Now I'm going to do the same thing for the child cereals. So I highlight that, insert chart. Okay, same thing. We want to use the column D as the labels. We're going to go customization. I want to make sure that I know that I'm talking about the children's cereal. 
Okay. I like to label this as carbs again, so I remember per serving, and this is in grams. And then I like to do one other thing, is since I have two values that are kind of talking about the same thing, but I want to make a comparison to them, or contrast, I'll make one maybe a different color, say like red, like that. There's a lot you can do to make these look different. So you definitely want to play around with different kinds of charts and see what kind you think um, show the information better. So here you go. This was a really just quick introduction. There's a lot of different little things you can investigate to try to make these graphs uh, nicer and easier to read or maybe more like what we have in our book. Um, so I'll let you guys play with that on your own time and um, talk to you guys all later. Bye.